Hi, wrestling fans. Thanks for clicking today's Dreaded D. Rose report. I've got a couple of days' worth of news here because I didn't get anything done over the weekend uh, on this. And by the way, I'm, I'm doing this on a uh, high-definition camera. I don't want to upload it to uh, anywhere because it takes too long to do an HD, which is another thing that would stop me from having any viewers if you see me in high def. So it's recorded that way, but not played that way. Takes forever to upload high definition th stuff. And you don't want to see this in high. Hey. Anyway, Mark Crozer, who uh, performs the and uh, wrote the Wyatt family's theme song, uh, announced on Twitter and on Facebook that he's going to be performing the song live, I guess, at WrestleMania 30. Uh, WWE website has a published list of 10 matches that, you, that are just too brutal for WWE.com but will be on the network. <laughs> They're still trying to get you to sign up, even though you can't sign up yet. Anyway, here's the top ten. Uh, Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho. Great, Amer Great American Bash 2008. Mankind versus Rock Royal Rumble 1999. Cena versus JBL. Judgment Day 2005. Uh, Degeneration X versus Mr. McMahon. Shane McMahon and Big Show. Unforgiven 2006. Randy Orton taking on Cactus Jack at Backlash 2004, which was a brutal match there. Uh, of course, I say the ECW things with, um, uh, what was it, uh, Terry Funk and uh, Cactus Jack or Mick. Stuff like that. And Sabu carrying on. Whew. Anyway, Randy Orton, well, I told you, uh, Trish Stratus taking on Stephanie McMahon, No Way Out 2001. I don't know how brutal that was. I Maybe I have to look back at that. Uh, Undertaker taking off Brock Lesnar, No Mercy, uh, 2002. Yep, Brock and Taker. Uh, Ric Flair versus Mr. McMahon, Royal Rumble, uh, 2002. Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, WrestleMania 13. Batista taking on Triple H at uh, 2005 Vengeance. I think Bret, I mean, uh, uh, Shawn Michaels taking on Mr. McMahon was a brutal match, too. He jumped off a I don't know, 12-foot, 15-foot ladder onto Vince's head that was stuck inside of a trash can. Oh, well. Hey, as uh, noted uh, several months ago, JBL and Michael Cole, they're doing a weight loss challenge, and uh, they're preparing to climb some sort of a mountain. They don't want to pull up any more fat than they have to. JBL noted that uh, today is the 40th, uh, day 40 of their challenge, and he's down 21 and a half pounds, and uh, he's got... 32.5 to go. Cole is down 13 pounds with 27 left to uh, lose. Man, they're going to be really thin. Uh, I'm on a weight loss challenge too. <laughs> Boy, it's challenging. PWI Insider confirms now Undertaker is scheduled to return to WWE TV February 24th. Raw, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Going to set up something for WrestleMania. And will it be Lesnar? I think he. He needs to do that fairly soon because Taker's got a little bit of an age on him. Don't need to wait till next year. Uh, there's uh, reports mentioned the return has just been locked in within the past 48 hours, and WWE's calling his uh, return to help kick off the WWE Network launch. Also to start a storyline for 30. Uh, Rock noted on Facebook that uh, his next book will cover the years of 2000 to 2014, being written by Joe Layden. I don't know why The Rock's not doing it, except he probably don't have time. Uh, who uh, worked on the first book that came out in 2000 for The Rock. And uh, it's going to be released just in time for the holidays. And amazing and jarring to go back and uh, experience my life again from 2000 to 2014, and writing my second memoir. Um, Life speaks uh, peaks and valleys, uh, and a shot of tequila, he says. Looking forward to sharing it with you for the holidays. And uh, CM Punk's been uh, pulled from the schedule for Comedy Central's uh, Midnight Show. Punk was scheduled to appear February 12th, and regarding Punk's upcoming appearance at the Comic World uh, Comic Con in Louisville, uh, there was some speculation that he was pulled from there also, and that he's no longer a talent listing. But is still listed on Wizard World header, though, and WWE website. So what to do? What do we think, huh? CBS Pittsburgh has published an article, this is interesting, 
on WWE deciding to air the controversial Over the Edge 1999 pay-per-view on the network. WWE should issue the following statement on Friday. It says uh, WWE Network will be airing the 1999 Over the Edge pay-per-view. However, portions of the event will be edited out of respect for Owen Hart. Uh, I think they could finally do that now because I, I'm pretty sure the Diana uh, Hart lawsuit and everything I think is settled. I think it's over with. Finally. All right, before the Royal Rumble last month, CBS spoke with Stephanie about Over the Edge 1999, and she said that they uh, had not made a decision at that time. Stephanie did confirm that Chris Benoit matches will be on the network. In, a, uh, in the video above, Stephanie said, there are incredible challenges, uh, challenging decisions to make, and at the end of the day, we try to do what's right for our fans, and we try to give them exactly what they want to see. I don't believe all of that, but uh, it's nice of her to at least say that. And WWE Network uh, website has posted Black History Month uh, with uh, Big E Langston, and he's going to make you watch it. Don't try not to. Bella Twins and others are hosting an anti-bullying rally at uh, James Madison Middle School, North uh, Hollywood, California today. Uh, Zeb Colder and uh, Steve Austin, they're recording some interviews for uh, Austin's podcast this afternoon. And it appears Austin heading towards the Staples Center uh, in Los Angeles, side of tonight's Raw. I wonder what's up. Hmm? PWI Insider reports that WWE is begin, beginning to use a new company logo once the network uh, launches later this month. It's the same logo we've seen on the network material and a new WWE jet. Uh, that Stephanie McMahon posted on in a uh, photo next week. So I guess they're changing the logo they're talking about on the TV shows to the network W's. As noted before, old Jay Uzo worked last night's Raw main event in Bakersfield last night without Jimmy because he's likely at home uh, with Naomi taking care of her eye. I would <laughs> think maybe he's, you know, lower, but just take care of her eye, that's all right. And WWE uh, Home Videos filming Batista with the Imperial Car Club in Los Angeles on Sunday. And they also filmed him doing some training at LA Fitness Center in the Playa Vista gym. It appears WWE is working on a new Batista DVD. And Vince McMahon joked on Twitter that he has a date with Betty White on tonight's Raw. I don't know whether he's joking or not. Here's a guy that's constantly got himself in trouble and uh, TMZ is in everybody's business and they always find out about it. Matt Hardy asked TMZ to pick up a feel-good story involving him for once and they publish it, uh, you know, the last time they published his arrest at the store, you know, the motel last month. Hardy recently met a young fan named Cody Goodman who uh, is a charge syndrome survivor. Don't know what charge is. Anyway, at uh, an indie wrestling event, <clears throat> last summer we noted that the former WWE star Alex Greenfield told uh, the Fight Network in an interview at one point Vince McMahon wanted to put a blue dot over Christian's face because it bothers Vince. <laughs> anyway, here's the story about that. That's some funny stuff. It says, right before I started, there was a uh, big show, and I think it might have been in Toronto. Christian was just so uh, completely over and everybody thought he was going to get a big push, and I think the World Heavyweight Championship at that point. Uh, we were uh, on the plane uh, at one time uh, shortly, you know, after I started, and Vince McMahon was uh, just like, God damn, he says, I just don't like his face. His face bothers me. He said, it, I was like, he's ugly, Vince. And no, it's not that he's ugly. It's just, I don't know, it's ratty. So uh, he said, well, what do you think I should do? This is Greenfield talking to Vince. Uh, and uh, he said, do the Kennedy gimmick. gimmick. He says, and uh, we're all, uh, he said, and we're all like what? He said, some on, uh, you know, the Kennedy fortune, uh, I guess got arrested for rape in the 1990s at some point, and when the woman was accusing him on the stand, all the networks put a blue dot over her face. Vince was like, ah, damn. He says, you know what You know, we should do? He said, we should get a blue dot over his face whenever he comes out. 
it was like it was a flight to Sheffield, England, and uh, also the the flight where the Spirit Squad idea was invented. It was a whole flight of bad ideas. <laughs> you never did get the blue dot, I don't think. But anyway, Greenfield's story was confirmed last night's Monday or last Monday's Raw when Christian came out and J.B. Hill mentioned putting the blue dot over his face. In case you heard that, that's the deal behind it. On we go with some news. WWE Shop's got a uh, Natalia t-shirt. Says, Made in the Dungeon, Queen of Hearts. Uh, Underground Toys have been, uh, is going to be unveiling, unveiling their uh, plush, uh, talking plush WWE toys at the New York uh, Toy Fair this year. Batista on Facebook said that WWE Home Videos filmed him at the Imperial Car Club, which I was telling you, and uh, they got a picture of him uh, with members of the club and a 64 Chevrolet with Eddie Guerrero painted on it. WWE NXT Sarah Backman has been given her uh, new NXT ring gear, a uh, ring name, S uh, Sarah. Weird way to spell it though, S H A R A, Sarah. Anyway, she can be found on Twitter at uh, you know Sarah WWE. Backman is uh, the first Swedish female uh, wrestler and former arm wrestling champion. So we know what to expect soon, as soon as she gets on the roster. And uh, F4W Online confirms that uh, WWE officials are discussing putting the idea together onto WWE World Heavyweight title Dan Daniel Bryant match with Batista and Daniel Bryant at WrestleMania 30. So making it a, a triple threat with... Uh, you know, the title, plus Batista and Bryant. Uh, Bryant versus uh, Triple H in the singles match is also on the table. Um, and noted WWE officials are holding off on any main decision until at least the Elimination Chamber is over. You never know who's going to get hurt in that thing. A fan uh, attended AJ Lee's New Orleans Comic Con Q&A uh, this weekend. And she was asked about her pipe bomb promo from last year. Said there uh, was supposed to be a follow-up to it. AJ said that while her, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, she was in her character, had been acting like a douche, and uh, she still hopes that other divas will realize that she was more uh, like trying to get things to happen for the diva division uh, and get them more time on television. Well, that pop bomb, pop bomb, bomb thing. AJ uh, reveals that some of the divas took the promo personal. Uh, she said it was unfortunate that the follow up to her pipe bomb got dropped due to the personal feelings. Of the other divas that they had. Oh. And regarding Roman Reigns' future with WWE, it's said that officials have the idea that Reigns will be the top guy one day, and they got a feeling Reigns may be their next heir, to, apparently, to John Cena. Former WWE and TNA star Lisa Marie Vaughn, Tara Victoria, whatever you want to call her, uh, she's going to be uh, celebrating her birthday with fans at the Squared Circle Restaurant in Chicago tonight for Raw. And WWE uh, stars Lana and Alexander Ruzov uh, attended Los Angeles Clippers uh, NBA game on Sunday night. Good thing they didn't go to the Laker game. They would have been bored crazy. Natalia, met, Natalia mentioned on Twitter that shop uh, got her first ever t-shirt. I didn't tell you that. Uh, said, I hope it makes fans happy. Waller returned to the ring at Saturday night's Maryland Championship Wrestling event. He defeated Sean Patrick after a pile driver. Goldust says, I wanted to do something that uh, I've never done. He's trying new things in the ring. He says, something that everyone looks at and says, Goldust can't do that. He says, oh my God, Goldust just did that. And leave him with, uh, I can't believe Gold just, <laughs> Goldust just did that. That's awesome. I don't know what he's trying to do, but he's trying to do something a little different, which is good. And a fan on Twitter like... Uh, like uh, other fans on YouTube, a uh, video about Kurt Angle wanting him to return to WWE. He asked Angle if it was true. Of course, Kurt Angle, it's true. It's true. And uh, John Cena tweeted the following this afternoon. He says, okay, self, body is beat to hell. Everything feels like slow motion. Big night tonight, focus up, begin to move, uh, find a way to never give up. Also, today would have been the birthday of one-time uh, world-class champion heavyweight uh, uh, gentleman Chris Adams would have been 59 years old and former WWF 
WCW, ECW wrestler Louis Spicoli, 43 years old. And on this day, we lost two personalities on this day. First was in 1984, Hall of Famer uh, David Von Erich died at just the age of 25. While competing in All Japan Pro Wrestling, David uh, died to, uh, due to a heart attack brought on by enteritis. I'm not sure. I think it's got something to do with the heart uh, muscle. Uh, also, in uh, 2003, fellow WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, died at the age of 44 years old. Uh, after a brief stint in XWF, Henning uh, returned to WWF, uh, though was quickly released for his part in the infamous Plane Ride from Hell. If you ever want to look that up, that was interesting. Uh, anyway, his last major run saw him uh, challenge Jeff Jarrett for a uh, NWA world title in the Young TNA promotion, but he was found dead in his Florida hotel room of a cocaine overdose. Thanks for clicking, you guys. I gotta go.